Hello Soul Fam, it's Sundar from Substance Over Star and welcome to a new video. Um, so I hope you're all doing really well in these times of social isolation. I'm in Bali at the moment, we're not in lockdown, thank God, we're just practicing social isolation. Um, my, uh, you know, my compassion and my sentiments go out to those of you who are in lockdown. Um, I wanted to talk today about um, something which I consider to be really, really important and that is like health freedom and health sovereignty because a lot of people right now are being really, really governed by fear um, and we're in a situation where globally we've kind of willingly consented to giving away our rights and our freedoms and shutting down our global economy so that we can feel safe um, from, you know, this virus, whether it's kind of real or exaggerated we can discuss in another video um, but it's you know it begs the question how safe can you really feel in your own home if you don't feel safe in your body because your body is ultimately your real home um, and if we if we do not have sovereignty over our own health then it's normal that we would feel fearful of you know an external virus um, so I'm in this video I want to share with you some top tips about you know how I empower my health um, and you know supplements and herbs and things that I take to boost my immune system and I hope that these help you feel safer as well so that you're not so easily led and ruled um, by fear-based tactics Okay, so the first one I want to talk about is vitamin C. It's a really obvious one. It's one of the most vital antioxidants for your health. It's a cofactor in various enzymes in your body. It fights free radicals, um, and that's wonderful for preventing cancer. It also delays the aging process because free radicals uh, lead to premature aging. Um, so there have been scientific peer-reviewed studies that have showed that supplementing vitamin C protects your body's lymphocytes, which is basically like a subtype of a white blood cell which is important for immune function. Um, another study showed that while it didn't make participants less likely to catch a common cold, um, and those who know common colds are usually caused by coronaviruses, not necessarily this strain of COVID-19, um, but it did reduce the duration of the cold and the symptoms were lessened. Um, so the best sources for food-based sources for vitamin C include fruits and vegetables like guavas, red bell, bell peppers, papaya, citrus is a really obvious one, kiwi, broccoli, kale even. Um, so yeah, like lots and lots of uh, amazing plant-based sources. Um, now your body doesn't store vitamin C, so you, every day you have to make sure that you're getting enough. And if you are concerned about catching coronavirus or if you feel like you're already coming down with something, then I would um, recommend you increase your dosage of these vitamin C rich foods or even take a supplement um, and also if you smoke which you shouldn't but if you do then definitely um, increase your intake okay zinc zinc is really super important for um, you know loads of functions within your body um, scientific studies have shown that zinc deficiencies um, resulted in severe immune dysfunctions. There was a study in the Middle East that kind of showed that um, people who had zinc deficiencies had uh, compromised immune systems. Um, so it can also impair your cognitive function, i.e. your ability to think clearly. So it's really, really super important for your brain activity and all of that good stuff. So um, just be careful of supplementing it because if you take it in high doses over long term, it can cause a copper deficiency. Um, so it's much better to try and get it from foods. Um, 
So good plant-based sources of zinc are chickpeas, lentils, beans, seeds, especially if they're cooked or sprouted. Um, you can also get it from animal products, but I don't recommend you get it from animal products, and I'll talk more about animal products later on in the video and how they affect your um, your health and your susceptibility to particularly um, coronaviruses. Okay, a herb that I really love for immune support is echinacea, and studies have shown that increases um, your uh, production of white blood cells. Um, it's often used to treat the common cold and other coronaviruses um, but just be mindful if you suffer from asthma or um, something like that then just uh, you know you can there can be an allergic response so that's the only thing to be mindful of so just you know if you do have any pre-existing health concerns then just consult your just consult your doctor um, and I should have said this disclaimer at the beginning I'm not a doctor or a medical professional I'm just sharing what's worked for me um, I'm a total health geek and I've been researching this stuff for years so I'm just sharing my own research hoping that it can help you but like with everything remain sovereign do your own research consult your physician or your health or detox coach if you have pre-existing health concerns um, okay so it boosts we're talking about echinacea boosts red blood cell production so that increases your oxi the oxygenation of your blood which is really really important for your immune system um, and it also promotes upper respiratory health which is excellent for um, safeguarding against coronaviruses and um, flu type viruses like SARS-CoV-19 um, it contains the antioxidants vitamin C, beta carotene, flavonoid, selenium and zinc as well so now you can see why it's so good for your immune system. So echinacea you can have it as a tea, you can just brew the roots, the flowers, um, the leaves into a tea at home if you can get access to the herbs. The way that I like to use it is um, uh, me and my mum, we like to make tinctures so tinctures are really beautiful things to make, they basically using like um, uh, pure uh, alcohol um, you use the alcohol to basically extract the spirit off the plant it's basically like an alchemical process um, or you can just get it from your local health food store as a um, tablet or as a lozenge as well okay now this one is a little bit more alternative um, colloidal silver or even better if you can get hold of it nanoparticle silver um, now it is a little bit controversial in the mainstream medical community for various reasons which I don't want to go into right now, um, big pharma, um, but it's highly, highly effective um, and I've been using it for years, my family's been using it for years, every time we find ourselves ca coming down with um, any kind of viral infection we'll just take a couple of tablespoons and it nips it in the bud and I've been lucky to not really suffered too badly from colds and flus as long as I have it with me. I always travel with it um, or I travel with a device that I can make it, f that I can use to make it with distilled water um, because my mom's, um, she, she makes it at home. Um, or you can, I mean here in Bali that you can get it really easily, they sell it in loads of different health food shops. Um, so it's been, for centuries it's been known as an antiviral. Um, so it's basically just silver ions um, suspended in distilled water and it will attach to pathogens and destroy the pathogens. So currently there's not a lot of studies but there are clinical trials which are um, ongoing into its effectiveness. Um, the one thing that the, um, the mainstream medical community will warn people of it is the fact that um, the ions can uh, accumulate in your tissues and turn your skin uh, greyish blue. I mean, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't think I look greyish blue, but I think you have to take a lot for, for that to happen. If you just take it when you start getting ill, um, just one or two tablespoons a day, if you've got a cold or something like that, then it's fine. Um, and I'm going to put a link in the description box below to a um, an article talking about how colloidal silver functions inside the body and how it destroys pathogens. Okay, so another hack that will really benefit you and your general well-being and your, of course, your immune system is a good gut cleanse because you know your gut health is kind of like the key to everything if you don't have a well-functioning gut 
then your ability, your body's ability to absorb nutrients is compromised. So all of that, you know, really healthy organic food that you're now investing in because you're investing in your health and taking it more seriously is literally going straight down to the toilet, like literally. Um, for most people, which is basically most of us, um, who have a history of um, not such a healthy diet, because a standard American diet or even a standard British diet is a lot of like, you know, meat and two veg and processed foods and things like that, which are considered normal. Um, a lot of people have a build up of mucoid plaque in their gut. Um, so even if you've already been on a healthy lifestyle for like a while, it is good to clear out any mucoid plaque that is accumulated in your gut to protect you from maybe an unhealthy lifestyle that you had before. Um, so you, there's, um, I did a, a combination of a few different protocols. There's one called the Richard Anderson mucoid plaque method. It's very intense and I would only recommend it for people who've already cleaned up their diet. Um, or you can do fasting. I did, what I did was I did um, a three day water fast followed by, I think it was actually a four day water fast, followed by a three day juice fast and then I transitioned into eating over two days by just having raw fruits. Um, and every evening I would have a shake similar to the one that Richard Anderson uh, recommends in his protocol, um, which was a mixture of charcoal, psyllium husk, bentonite clay, because that pulls out toxins. The psyllium husk adds fiber. Charcoal also pulls out toxins. Um, and different herbs to support your gut health. Um, so that was an elixir that would have every night to kind of push any plaque and any um, compacted stool out of my system um, and I would have a probiotic every day and you should have a probiotic every day as well because it's very good for your gut health um, and uh, also something to be aware of if you're not used to fasting then don't go straight into like a seven day fast like I did I've been practicing intermittent, fa intermittent fasting for several years I've talked about it in previous videos on my channel if you want to have a look at those so maybe just start off with intermittent fasting because that will get you on the right path if you if you're not used to fasting so just start with intermittent fasting and then you can maybe do like a, a three-day fruit cleanse that's a good one to start with and then move to a, like a juice cleanse and then into water fasting and more intense types of fasting so just always be gentle with your body Okay, exercise, do I need to say anything like increases circulation? Um, yeah, so if you have a compromised immune system, then over-exercising can be bad, so don't go crazy. Like I just said, be gentle with yourself. If, you, if you've had a very sedentary lifestyle up till now or um, health problems that have stopped you from having a regular exercise program, then just start, you know, even I do this. If I haven't worked, sometimes I'll take breaks if I'm really busy with work and I won't, I won't exercise for months on end, like, believe it or not. Um, uh, so yeah, I'll just start off with like a 15 minute yoga session like every other day and then I'll just build up gradually as I start to get more fit. Um, so yeah, just start off with something gentle. Um, okay, breath work, amazing. Um, so breath work is completely free. Um, you can get it anywhere that there's oxygen and it has wonderful um, health benefits. It lowers your cortisol levels, it lowers your blood pressure. Um, I'm, this, I'm just talking about things that are specific to your immune system, but it has a whole host of other benefits as well. Um, it basically improves your autonomic response to physical and mental stress um, and it improves your arterial. Um, so what does that mean in plain English? Um, cortisol is basically your stress hormone. Um, your autonomic response is basically your body's unconscious response to whatever's happening externally or even internally. Um, so when your body is less stressed, it basically, it's, the, its immune system can function as it's meant to, to its maximum capacity. When your body's under stress, um, a lot of these extraneous systems like you know your digestive system or your immune system become compromised um, so yeah improving arterial blood flow basically increased blood flow improves the oxygenation of your red blood cells um, 
and which is vital for your immune system. So yeah, breath work is really, really powerful and it has a lot of other benefits as well, not just for your immune system. And for those of you who are not following me on Instagram, I'm currently offering a 70% discount off the Marcel Hoff method. So if you don't know, Marcel Hoff is Wim Hof's brother and he did an online breathwork course with Yogi Lab, who are basically like um, a, a shala, a yoga shala based in Uluwatu, which is like the breathwork capital of the world. It's in South Bali and it's where a lot of people go to learn free diving. Um, so they approached me, asked me if I wanted to try out the course and um, introduce it to my audience. We've already had a lot of people who've signed up with my 70% discount code. Um, I will put the code and the link in the description box below if that's something that you want to try out. It's like, I think it, the original course was like $162 and it's currently $47 during um, uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic. So definitely take advantage of that if you're new to breath work. Um, okay, another, another thing that's completely for free is grounding. Now, I know this one's going to be a little bit difficult for people who are in like severe lockdown, especially if you don't have access to a garden. But if you do, um, I really recommend that you get outside and just take your shoes off and feel your, uh, feel your feet on the ground. Because studies have shown that people who practiced earthing every day um, showed an increased immune response when given a vaccine when compared with a control group who were basically fitted with a, a placebo type earthing device. Um, yeah, sorry if the edit seems weird, but my my, com my computer, not my computer, my camera keeps on doing this weird thing where it cuts out every like two minutes. So um, if it's a bit jerky, that would explain why. Um, yeah, so the Earth is basically has a lot of negative electrons that when our feet come into contact with her, um, rebalances our auric field. Um, because we ourselves are electric beings as well. So if we become disconnected from the earth, then our auric fields also become out of balance. Um, so grounding is really, really important to practice every day. Um, and, you know, if you don't have access to an outdoor area, then, you know, you have my deepest compassion because it's, a, it, you know, it's an important thing for our health. Um, and this is one of the things why, you know, all of this stuff with the police arresting people for going outside if they're not shown to be like actively exercising has kind of made me so angry. Um, likewise, you know, getting enough vitamin D and enough sunlight is really, really important for your immune health. Sunlight is known to kill viruses and just generally like having, you know, exposing yourself to sunlight helps to regulate your circadian rhythm. If your circadian rhythm is out of balance, then your body gets confused about what time it is and you end up staying up really late, especially with, you know, all of us like looking at all of these devices all the time. You know, you might find yourself not being able to fall asleep at an appropriate time and then you, you know, it just creates this negative cycle. This is something that I've had always had a lot of problems with having a really, really bad circadian rhythm. Um, and it can just be solved by just getting a little bit of sun exposure, just in the most brightest part of the day, just so that your body knows when it's time to go to bed. Because if you're not getting enough sleep and if you're not getting enough sunlight, then everything in your body suffers, particularly your immune system, and you become more susceptible to illnesses. Okay, the last one I want to talk about is a plant-based diet, rich in fruits and veggies, and really, really try and keep animal products to an absolute minimum or eliminate them completely. Now, why is that? For two reasons. Uh, fruits and vegetables are really, really rich in nutrients. They're really rich in vitamins and minerals. Now, while animal products can also have certain trace minerals that are important for our body, such as zinc and iron and things like that, um, they're actually very mucus forming in the body. Now, I'm not saying that plant-based foods can't also cause mucus. I mean, eating certain root vegetables and too much rice and processed foods can also cause mucus in the body. Um, but animal products definitely, particularly dairy, cause a lot of mucus in the body. And that's something that you really, really need to be mindful of if you're trying to protect you know, your temple against respiratory viruses. Um, 
to try and minimize the amount of mucus that your body has. Um, also bear in mind that animal products are calorifically dense. So even if they do have certain minerals that your body can use, you're not getting as much of those minerals as if you consume them from plant-based sources because you generally have to eat more plant foods to get the same calorific benefit than you would with animal products. Um, and also it's just a lot more kinder and compassionate and more sustainable to eat plant foods, especially local plant foods. Um, okay, so that is it. That's all I wanted to talk about. That's my list. Um, so I hope that those top tips will really help you in kind of reclaiming your, your sovereignty over your body and empowering yourself. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment box below. Um, it's really, really important for us at this time to try and be um, as self-sufficient and as self-reliant as we possibly can be, um, just for ourselves, for our families, and also so that we can assist each other as a community to also not be so dependent on, you know, big corporate structures like big pharma and stuff like that because there's actually a lot that we can do to empower ourselves without needing to rely on a huge system that enslaves us. So yeah, that's it. That's all I have time for today and I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you found the information useful and I will see you in the next video. One love, soul fam.